silence this crack and like make an intro and then we'll start. Yeah, should be. Oh, e <laughs> yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> ah, right, everything looks good. Hello, and welcome to another Path of Exile University lesson. This is going to be solo cell found by Professor Steel Mage. So, we're going to be talking about Ste uh, Steel Mage? We're going to be talking about solo cell found and uh, everything about that. And, uh,. Thank you for joining me here today, Steel Mage. Happy to be here, Ziz. What's, what's going on? Yeah, not much. Just bit my tongue, so I'm happy you're doing uh, this lesson. Yeah, Chewing is hard. Take over. Yep. It is. So I have uh, I have your slides here. So just let me know when you want to advance. All right, no worries. So we're on the the first Stallings slide. Sorry, Solar Cell Phone slide. Yep. All right, cool. So we can go to introductions. All right. So tell us a little bit about Solar Cell Phone. All right. So what we're going to talk about today, uh, as part of this presentation, is the history of SSF. Just very brief. This is not necessarily something you need to know. I just like to talk about it. You know, I love SSF. I'm pretty passionate about it. I've been playing it for a couple of years now. So I'm just going to cover some of the history of it because I think I just think it's fun. Um, yeah, but feel free to skip ahead to the juicy info uh, later on if uh, that's not your. Uh, not up to uh, your tastes. So after that, we'll be talking about why SSF, you know, why people play it. Um, obviously, it is technically, uh, so it's both, uh, well, I guess we, we'll talk about that when we get to it, but why SSF? We'll be talking about builds for solo cell found, crafting for solo cell found, leveling, you know, all the basic stuff, all the, uh, the good info, Atlas progression. That is something I still struggle with, so keep that in mind. Uh, Atlas progression is, um, it's hard, right? So it's going to be hard to talk about it, but I'll try my best. Uh, efficiency, which is something that is not specific to Solar Cell Phone, which is why I put it in there, because it's good for... I mean, well, yeah, we'll, we'll go into that, but it's good for solo players, which I think the majority of PoE players are. So that'll be good for everybody. And then just talking about some alternatives to SSF. So we'll be talking about things... That, well, we'll get into that as well, but it'll be things like private leagues, group found... Stuff like that, because Solar Cell Phone is not the only alternative game mode to just playing trade. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I'm excited. All right. So we can go to the next slide. Nice. I just put coffee on myself. <laughs> um, brief history of SSF. So, uh, so yeah, there's PT right there on the slide. Um, so the first solo cell phone player that I was aware of back in the day was Anu Hart. Now he, um, back in the day, solo cell phone wasn't really thought of as an option. It was very much so balanced around trading. Um, so you didn't really, you didn't really see it much. The only time you really saw solo cell phone was in, in, in races. Um, but I, I, in terms of like playing it as your main game mode, you didn't really see it that often. Um, but what someone did called Anuhart back in the day, they actually played Solar Cell Phone, not in the temporary leagues, because it was very, it would be very difficult back then to play Solar Cell Phone in the, um, in the, uh, the temporary leagues. They actually played in permanent standard league. And they actually had such an impressive collection of gear that when they, you know, tried to say, hey, I'm Solar Cell Phone, you know, they had a thread talking about it. People thought they were cheating. People thought they, you know, obviously were just buying the items and whatnot, right? So, but I, I, I figured, you know, they're being genuine and I thought it was really, 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 really cool. The idea that, um, you could limit yourself in this way and achieve and still achieve so much. I think, he, I, I don't think he ever had a mirror. I'm not actually sure, but yeah, he had things like co legacy comms, uh, legacy shavs, all that back in the day, which I thought was really, really, really mm -hmm. cool. I jumped forward, um, many, many, many years later, obviously power creep exists in PUE and solo self and actually started to become more of an option. Um, people were achieving more and more and more and more in shorter and shorter, shorter time frames. And eventually, um, Project PT, the, uh, the lad on the screen, he actually did something really cool. Um, obviously we have a really awesome community in PUE and he did something with the community. He did a, uh, an unofficial solo cell phone league, because if you're not aware, solo cell phone didn't always exist as an option. Um, I think can't remember how old it is exactly, but it's only a few years. Two or three, actually, I think. Yeah, yeah. 
So he actually, it's really cool. He was able to uh, make an, an unofficial solo self on League with a leaderboard and everything. Like he had his own, kind of like how we have Path of Exile Racing at the moment. And that was kind of like the first time I played Solo Cell Found. I imagine that's the first time a lot of people, well, I guess it was pretty low key, but it got enough attention at the time to actually uh, look, uh, make GGG reconsider it as an option. And I believe, I I'm not sure if we ever had any direct, like, GGG saying anything direct, but um, GGG actually implemented the official SSF as a result of this league. I, I believe that's I believe that to be the case anyway. Yeah, and and they uh, on a on a history note, they also said that they didn't really want to uh, introduce solo cell phone because they didn't want to split the player base. Obviously, the economy is a big part of the game for a lot of people. So because of that, there's and I'm sure the stance is still the same. But they said that they're never going to balance the game after solo cell phone. That it's always going to be a self-imposed challenge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that is worth pointing out that while a solo self fan is its own separate league, you can migrate, right? There, it's you're still part of the same community. Yeah, you know, it's still community driven. It's still, you know, I don't feel like isolated or anything. Um, but yeah, anyway, they uh, they implemented um, uh, SSF and Legacy League, which is when I obviously uh, pushed really, really, really hard. Ended up getting the first one hundred humble brag, um, or not so humble brag. And yeah, like I said, I've been playing. <laughs> I've been playing SSF ever since, pretty much. Um, and today, if uh, you know, if you keep up to new, if you keep up to date with your PUE news, um, people are still playing SSF today. I think it's more popular than ever. Um, Soul Surf and Softcore and Hardcore alike are both really, really popular game modes. And we saw um, just recently, uh, Iron versus Wild, I believe. He actually collected every single unique in Path of Exile. In permanent standard league which i think is you know one hell of an accomplishment so yeah i think um the the game mode's uh more popular than ever and it's uh really cool what people are able to accomplish these days yeah no that really, was really, insane really, like yeah. seeing his reaction to getting the spore guard there at the end was awesome yeah two over two thousand blighted maps yep. absolutely crazy it's insane but yeah then that's a brief history of ssf we can go to the next lovely slide <laughs> So yeah, why SSF? Yeah, because it's ethical, right? Um, so, I think that in Solo Self and it's more, it's it's kind of like a, it's partially like a purist kind of thing. You you spend a lot more time actually just playing the game. You know, obviously, um, you don't think about trading. You don't think about um, you don't you're not staring at like an auction house screen. You're not waiting for a whoop before you can play the game. You're not stuck in your hideout thinking like. Is this guy gonna reply, right? Is this person gonna reply? I need this item for my build. You're not thinking that. You're thinking, I just need to play the game. You know, if I can't get, I can't progress if I don't just play the game. So I, I really enjoy that part of the game that you just play the game. You know, you don't, um, you don't, you don't feel frustrated or stuck because you know someone's not replying to you, uh, replying to you whisper for an item. You know, you you, you just play the game, see what drops. I, I feel like it's a very pure, you know, game mode in that way. It's just pure gameplay. Um, then there's obviously the, the item drops. Now, in Trade League, you might have noticed that you'll, you'll drop an item. It might be kind of a cool item. Um, maybe like Face Breakers or Prism Guardian or just whatever, like, you know, mid-tier, rare, unique. Or maybe Pulsa. even some super rare. Yeah, yeah. Maybe even a really, really rare, unique. And in Trade League, it's it might be worth a Chaos Orb. It might be worth 10 Chaos Orbs, right? But in Solo Cell Found, it's invaluable. Some of the items you'll find that are, you know can be quite common or easy to buy in Trade League are actually so special. I guess it's kind of hard to describe for me, but um, like my own anecdotal uh, experience with this was um, the Unshattered Will. This was a shield from the mm. Harbinger maps. You had to collect all four fragments. Now this is probably worth twenty C. I think in the, at the time it was actually worth quite a few exalts, but it, it still it wasn't like super super valuable. Like you could you could spend a couple you could spend like an hour or two farming and you'd be able to buy it. But in Solo Southland this took me weeks. But when I finally got it, the satisfaction of getting it was 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 was, was amazing, right? Yeah. And, and then yeah obviously chat's popping off about you know Stormfire and Rise QT. I think we all have our own personal like struggles with certain items but it's so the the, the, the struggle kind of makes it more rewarding you know 100 percent. like i have the same thing happen with impulsa i hadn't had an impulsa drop for six months on soul cell phone 
And I like, I love making impulsive builds. I love like the blue explosion. And in the league where I got Impulsa, I'm like, I'm screaming, right? I finally get one. It's way more exciting than a, a mirror or an exalted orb or anything, right? Because it's something I really wanted. And I checked like what it would have been worth if I was trade league and it was 15C. So I was getting this excited for a 15C item. So that, like Steelmage has been saying, is the number one power of SSF. Nearly everything can be a chase item. Yeah, yeah. Like day one a gold like um a face breaker day one for in trade league might be a couple chaos lords, but in solo cell fan it can be like a journey. That can be the beginning of a journey, right? Yep. So uh then there's the pacing. Now um this is admittedly this is more of a streamer thing, but you know, maybe you've got a lot of time on your hands, maybe you maybe you really want to like play a lot of PoE, but you find yourself burning out quickly. Um Pacing is why it is one of the big reasons, at least as a streamer, I play a lot of SSF. It takes forever to do anything. I just mentioned weeks farming a shield, right? Um, you can burn through the content in PoE and Trade League a lot faster than SSF. So if that's not what you want to do, if you actually really want to play a lot of PoE for whatever reason, you know, maybe you're indoors a lot these days, um, then SSF can be great to really um, pace the content out a bit better. So, you know, like what what I've got down here is what takes a week to do on trade league can become league long goals. You know, going back to what I was talking about with the shield, the reason I was farming the shield was it was one piece of, of the puzzle towards my deep delving build. So, you know, farming for that build became like a league long goal. That was really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the last point here is challenge, which I mean, you, you know, we can, I think we both agree SSF is hard. You know, we've both had a, we've yeah. had a lot of rip. In SSF, and it's 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 very yeah it's it's difficult, so um, it, it it can be nice to challenge yourself in that way. And uh, on on that note, it's especially hard, um, especially if you want to do self on hardcore on the start. It is especially hard because we're beta testing, um, and as Steel Mage has famously said several times before, I just let Zizzerin test all the new league mechanics to see if they're safe to do or not, because. I, I love doing them. I love experimenting with them. But that also means that suddenly you run into some circles on the ground that do 6,000 damage each and are stacked on top of each other with 10. Thanks, Heist. Um, yeah. So an idea that if you are interested in playing solo cell phone, but you don't want to get like annihilated by new mechanics at the start, you could do something like play uh, trade league at the start and then restart later in the league uh, on solo cell phone hardcore, for example, when you know more about the mechanics. Yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, I guess I didn't put it on here, but that's a good point. Um, because Solo Cell found you are the entire economy, effectively, right? You were the only one that you, you basically become the economy. You can try out SSF whenever you want. I guess that's another good reason to try. You know, maybe you played Trade League already in the league and you've just done what you wanted to do, right? You can always restart in SSF. And because it's a fresh start for the entire economy, you don't feel behind like you might in Trade League. Um... So that's kind of... It's kind of nice. Mr. Anderson just pointed out a really good thing as well. That there is a big downside to SSF, which is you have a lot less build diversity. Like in Trade League, you can easily, like, especially as an experienced player, have a league starter that might need one or two specific uniques. On Soul Cell Phone, you don't necessarily have that luxury. Yeah, yeah. So I, I do talk about this in the build section, which is coming up next, but um, just to skip ahead a bit, that... When you do get something that's build enabling, it feels like you you want to immediately reroll that. Like it becomes a really really good excuse to reroll mm -hmm. when you get you know like well like, I I use face breakers as a as a good example here, but um there's lots of uniques that are really really build enabling that will make you want to reroll more than ever before because you've got this item you might not have it in the future, right? Yep. Anyway, uh can go to the uh the next slide real quick <laughs> nice yeah you want this emote from you do you know that slide. that is my only emote on twitch that's been stolen by other streamers i saw you talking about this i would yoink it too man it's a good emote dude <laughs> it's a good emote i use it all the time um but yeah builds um so this is a slide that you could talk about all day right i mean this is uh this is the slide this is in fact this slide is all we're going to be doing in like a week from now yep yeah, so um, the starting build, well, just to get just to get things started. So the first build you should pl you play in SSF, as the person pointed out earlier, 
So if your build needs one or two uniques, it's probably not a good build to start with. Um, you, you should be playing, unless it's farmable, you, you should be playing um, a build that requires little to no uniques. It doesn't have to be the build, right? It doesn't have to be the build, but it, ideally it should be the build you start with because otherwise you're going to be put in this awkward position, uh, situation where you're playing an ignite base penance band build and you really need this unique opal ring called Stormfire. And you just don't have it and your build's dealing half the damage and you feel you feel really 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 frustrated if this one unique could just drop but it never does and that you know that's you're just gonna have to accept that you can't play that build and expect to get that item so ideally you're playing a build that doesn't need any uniques and you just work with what you get which is you know the next point obviously is um re-rolling now if you do get the storm fire then maybe you consider re-rolling or if you do get the face breakers maybe you play the uh the cyclone face breaker build right but I think it's uh, really, really, really fun to re-roll an SSF because it kind of gives you a really good excuse. Because normally, if you wanted to, normally you could just buy these items instantly, right? But when they drop, it's almost like a sign. You know what I mean? Yep. I think, um, so I think it's a really good excuse to re-roll. Um, now this next point, what's possible? Oh, I guess uh, before we talk about that, we should talk about the example builds uh, for the starter builds that I was just mentioning. Um, so some example starter builds would be uh, minions need like very little to no gear. Um, miners have a lot of damage and can easily do red mats with the damage they have. You just need to survive on them. Um, melee, actually in a really good state for Soul Cell Friend. I know there's a bit of a hot topic here and there, but melee is actually, I would argue, pretty close to it, it's the, well right now it's the meta for because there's one build in specific but even even outside of that one broken build there's uh it's very 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 competitive very 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 strong it might not be the fastest build in the game but it, it it's very balanced overall it's got a lot of damage a lot of survivability so um melee is actually really good so obviously you know this would be like earth shatter um uh what do you call it the blade melee builds like earthquake lacerate and uh Grand slam. uh yeah, well, Grand Slam's the one I was trying not to mention. Because it's probably not going to exist next league. Probably not. Yeah. And then bows. I've actually shit-talked bows a lot. But these last couple of events, these last couple of weeks, I've, I've sort of seen the power of the bow builds. They're, they're, they That's are squishy. They are harder. To... Yeah, the Toxic Rain, Caustic Arrow builds. Did you have another one? No, just Caustic Arrow, Toxic Arrow. Right. Yeah, well, those two builds are really good, though. They are really good. I, I kind of yep. shit talk those builds, but they, they, they actually do hold up. They actually are very competitive. Yeah, no, they're yeah, really they're, good. They're, and you can play them on yeah. a few different ascendancies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, um, again, worth pointing out though, you're not, you don't play, you don't have to play these builds forever in Solo self -end. You just start with them. You can, you can swap from Toxic Rain bows to a Lightning Arrow Ice Shot build or some crazy bow miner or whatever it just depends what items you have and how long you play but i i highly recommend starting with a strong build yeah it just yeah it's, it's a real struggle otherwise although i mean maybe that's part of the challenge maybe you don't mind struggling and there is one thing that is like really really cool in solo cell phone and this depends a little bit on how much power creep there is in the game but you have much more of a reason to have multiple builds in solo cell phone where you might want a specific boss killer uh, and if you're on hardcore you might even there's been leaks in the past where I've had like just one character for killing Uber at Ziri. It's like, that's that character's job. You're my Uber at Ziri killer. Um, and, and that's something you wouldn't see as much in Trade League because you do have more of an option to make one character that can do everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's like a power creep thing these these days. I think I think even even these days, that's kind of becoming true in SSF. Mm -hmm. Like what, what's possible in SSF is um, is expanding. Which I guess is the next point. Because, yeah, obviously things like Oro Stack uh, exist currently. Um, yep. We don't know if they will next league. But that, that build can do damn well close to everything. Um, yeah. Now, uh, speaking of builds that are possible. Now, this is this is probably talking to, like, very few people. Because it... it but I, I think it's still fun to talk about. While it, it is relevant to a few people, it's still kind of cool what, what is possible. You know, I, I mentioned earlier how uh, man, uh, Iron vs. Wild was able to uh, find every unique in the game. Um, you can you can really do almost anything. I mean, you think about it, right? You, your 
only not able to trade, but everything's still in the game, right? Except, you know, everything's still in the game. So, uh, you, you can pull off some really powerful, crazy... You, you can pull off anything, pretty much, given enough time and effort. Um, so, th but but what I like to do, what, what I like to do with, um, at, at the point that I'm at, is I like to take builds that are trade league viable. Things that, builds that you don't consider viable in SSF, and then play those builds. So, obviously, currently that's aura stacking. Um, so I'll spend, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks farming the gear. Um, not possible for everybody to do that. I totally understand that, but it's still, it, it, it kind of makes for a nice chase scroll. Playing builds that you're not supposed to play. Um, mm. CI came up here as well. Um, you can obviously play energy shield based builds. They just require a lot of, uh, planning effort and time. Um, but like I said, S S SSF is going to take more time to get into it to play, but these these are all very these are all these are goals you can totally strive for. Just um just gonna have the time, knowledge, and all and all that good stuff. All right, so we can go to the next slide now. <laughs> Dang you! All right, so crafting, so crafting. I think this is one of the cooler parts about SSF. Have I said that about every slide? I hope I haven't. Um, but yeah, crafting. I I, I love crafting in Solar Cell Found. It, it's kind of like a. It can be. It can be very. It can be very frustrating at times. Um, that that last point on the slide, harvest question mark, is is a, is a big question mark for me because um. I would prefer that it to be, a little bit. More to crafting, but currently, what's on the slide is what we have. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, going to the first point, currency usage. So obviously, in Solo Cell Found, you can't buy stuff, right? You can't trade other players with your currency. You just got to use it. If you've got a Chaos Orb, you know, you can save it for uh, Zana mods, but typically, you know, you can actually just Chaos Spam an item, right? And that's totally, totally valid because, you know, that that's what the Chaos Orb's there to do, right? That's, you know, you, it rerolls a rare item, right? So you just use your currency, and I really like that part about Solo Cell Found. I remember... Mm -hmm. Like in Trade League, I remember having this feeling that exalts were so valuable on the market on on Trade League that I never wanted to just slam an item. Yeah, and that felt very counterintuitive. Like that didn't feel right. Like I should be I should be exalting stuff, but I'm not because you know you they're, they're worth way more on the market. You know, it's like hundreds of chaos orbs on the market sometimes, right? So that was one of the big appeals for me, just being able to drop an exalt and use it. And I do this all the time, um, you know, I'll be slamming jewels and whatnot. But yeah, it's, it's just fun to use the currency. Um, but yeah, you, you obviously do got to be careful because you are super, you are, you're severely limited. You know, obviously I'm talking about slamming exalts. A lot of people probably don't drop that many exalts. So you, know, you do got to keep in mind that the currency is also a lot more valuable and hard to get. But yeah, um, it's, 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 a, it's a balancing act essentially. Um, on that line of thinking, because you can't buy currency, your filter is really important here. Um, I often find myself having to edit the the filters I use to add things like portal scrolls, because you know if you you know if you're not picking them up or buying them off the vendor, you can't just buy them off other players, right? So, knowing how to edit a filter is pretty important here. Um, for a lot of things, I, I highly recommend. Either finding out how to use the website, um, filterblade.com, or knowing how to edit it just on the fly in like Notepad or something. Because um, yeah, you, you're gonna need to. It, the most of, most filters are designed around trade league, so you're gonna have to edit it depending on what currency or things you need. Um, an example of this is bases, actually. Mm -hmm. um, especially as we get more crafting, like assuming harvest crafting comes back in some form, um, bases are really, really, really important here. And I'm not just talking about the good bases. Like, obviously, everybody knows, like, an 86 Faragalia or something like that's really good, right? But I find early on, even just having things like a Karui Trapper base dropping is important. Because that's you're going to need to craft on that, like, day one, like, immediately, pretty much. So even, even having... Just any item level base to craft on is, is 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 good here. So again, you know, it's really important to know how to edit a filter. So usually my day one filters will have 
any item level on Astral Plate, Kuri Chopper, or if I'm going Energy Shield gear, like Varigalis and stuff. And then I'll have mid-tier item levels. So you want to know the item level breakpoints here. I don't know. I don't know if one of the other courses covers item levels. Yeah, they do. But um, yeah, so but you want you want to know. Yeah, so you want to look that up, find the crafting guide, and look up the item level breakpoints because there are breakpoints for gear. Just off the top of my head, item level seventy three is a big one for both weapons and and uh, and and uh, gear and uh, equipment. And then obviously the default filters usually show the top tier item level stuff. Yeah, but and really important to to use the lower level stuff. Another thing with bases in Soul Sulfon as well, I a lot of the time end up keeping a lot more influence bases. Um, just because if you do suddenly need something for a build, like a Shaper Belt or an Elder Belt or an Elder Ring Shaper Ring, and you've like vendored that for alterations or like just not bother picking it up, that is a very, very like punishing feeling in Soul Cell Fun. You can't just buy it. I needed a Shaper Quiver to get the plus one arrow mod. I think it's also a Drox mod. And I, I hadn't picked it up because I didn't think I'd be playing a bow build. And it took so long to find this. <laughs> Took so and it was during harvest too and you could influence items but not quivers quivers were the i think the only item you couldn't influence no way so I, yeah i remember needing this quiver so bad for my build i did eventually get it but i remember um it was one of the hardest things i had to find all league that's so, so yeah funny. absolutely yeah H hoarding can be i'll talk about this later but um you, you do kind of got to balance hoarding versus efficiency yeah because i in that situation i probably should have hoarded more but yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah so talking about recipes now um recipes in PUE allow SSF to be a lot more accessible um so there are certain uh recipes you're going to need to know for your build um obviously there's the basic ones like the resistance mods and stuff right that's very elementary that's just the basic stuff but there are some like build enabling recipes to keep an eye out for things like the trigger mod on weapons, things like um, gain life is ES, uh, ES is life. I remember you asking me repeatedly for that in the last league, but yep. obviously I never found it. So yeah, um, knowing what recipes you need for your builds important, so you know to actually farm them. Um, it's actually kind of complicated. I don't even think I can explain it in this presentation because it certain recipes so obviously we're talking about unveiling here because most most of the recipes are not hard to find you just map um but some recipes come from betrayal and unveiling and that's uh is that actually covered anywhere in like itemization in um, one of the other i haven't talked much in depth about unveiling specifically because betrayals like i do have like a 30 or 40 minute betrayal episode i've talked about like yeah. the normal vendor recipes and stuff from the weekly <clears throat> yeah i mean that's the beauty of pv right like that There's this so one little subtopic is a 30 minute video yeah. but yeah it's important to know what unveiled crafts you need for your build so, so just some off the top of my head trigger mod like uh es is life ma minus mana cost on rings avoidance. and uh, amulets avoidance on chess uh chess yep life and mana on chess so there's a few there's a few just there uh conversion on gloves as well so just th there's just a few off the top of my head but it's important to know how to get them because yeah and, and some of them have item level requirements. Like, for example, the trigger mod, uh, which basically what it does is uh, whenever you do any, like, use an action, like any movement ability, any attack, it will uh, trigger the gems in your weapon that you have this craft on. Uh, and that has an item level of 75 to be unveiled. Yeah, so that means uh, yellow tier maps are above. So, yeah, that's uh, it's important to know because otherwise you'll spend all this time farming and you, yeah, you may never get it if you're doing low tier uh, content. You can do tier 5. Because tier 5 maps are 73 since they are Se unique. They're 72. I'm positive. Wait, are they not? 68, 69, 71, 72, 73. 68, 69, 70, 71, 72. How's it, how's it not right. 72? Wait, search chat. Six. Oh, maybe you're right. No, it does need to be tier 6. Wait, doesn't it? I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's tier 5's fine. <coughs> yeah, tier 5's totally fine. Uh, <coughs> moving on. Moving on. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <coughs> uh, so, uh, no, it has to be tier 6, you're right. 
I was trying to, I was trying to give you an answer, is this? Uh, so, flasks. Um, but anyway, point is, it's really, it's previous complicated. It's, it's hard to find out where things drop and it's, it's difficult. And yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, flasks. So, uh, they, this is, this is something I added on last minute, but flasks are really important. I, I, I think every time I talk about Peewee ever, I'm always going to talk about flasks. Like, I'll, you know, if I was to introduce a friend to the game, I'll say, hey, so this is how you download the game. Also, make sure you roll your flasks, right? I, I'm always going to shoot on this anywhere, everywhere I can. Um, so really important to make sure you're rolling them. Um, they're like a really big source of power early on, and you're not going to have much else because you're not going to have like OP gear or uniques because, you know, you're fresh. Um, so obviously the tip here, I'm sure you've already mentioned it in other talks, but I'll mention it again, is, is bestiary to roll your yes. flasks here. So, so make sure you are hunting those beasts and using them to roll, you know, the, uh, what I call like the mandatory ones, you know, so shock, freeze, uh, curse, right? Wait, and bleed, obviously. So those are the uh, yeah. mandatory ones. Well, I wouldn't say shock is mandatory though. See, I thought that one time too. No, especially not it. on softcore. True, 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 true. But I, yeah, I mean, that is like the last one to prioritize. But I've, I've, I've ruined mini league stats because I thought the same thing. But yeah. obviously... I'm, I've died to it a lot too. It. Yeah. So you can you can definitely get away with it. It's not mandatory. It's just really important. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Now, um, in Solar Cell Found, there are some alternative gearing methods beyond just crafting. Or beyond the basic crafting. Just basic uh, crafting currency. So div card farming is a big one. Um, I I could go into a, um, a whole spiel about this, but... The TLDR is, I mean, the basic one is obviously things like tabula. Obviously not so good to farm anymore, the um, the humility cards and blood aqueduct. But um, it, it, it showcases a good example of uh, div card farming and solo cell phone. So if you need like an early six link, humility card farming can work for most people. Um, why is it not so good anymore? Because, well, this is going to depend on the league. So partially it's because... A lot of builds are just like really, really powerful up until early red maps. So you can get away on a five link on most builds these days. I think you'll agree with this, right? Like most, Even most a builds four only link on some builds too, really far. Yeah. Yeah. So a six link isn't as big of a deal as it used to be. You know, builds, just, builds, are, just, builds are just more powerful these days. Um, the other thing is there's another div card. So I guess I'll mention the other div card. Uh, Dapper Prodigy, the Dapper Prodigy. Now that's very farmable currently. I hope GG doesn't nerf it. They should probably nerf it at some point, but they, they haven't yet. But it's uh, very, very, very reliable to farm it. More so than any other cards. It's almost It almost seems like it's got like an extra zero on the drop rate or something. Like it's, yeah. it drops too often. Um, oh yeah, and Vile Side Areas I'll mention as well for six things. Um, but uh, the Dapper Prodigy is like an alternative that I prefer to humility card farming. So I haven't farmed tabula for like like a year plus now. Same. I would yeah. generally farm like a few cards on each character and then like I'll just get tabulous eventually if I ever want it, but yeah. But yeah, there's many div cards. Um I guess I'll mention one for like so one that Kav, uh Kavruska likes to farm is the offering. That's the Chavron's wrappings. But those going back to like those build defining uniques, div card farming is uh, can be if there's one available can be a really good way to get those build defining uniques yeah. so it's important to know um it's, it's important to like keep that in mind when you're thinking about the build you want to play um prophecies as well you can't really can't you can kind of farm these these are kind of tricky like if you it's a little bit complicated like they have some prophecies have item levels so you can fish for coins at on lower level characters it's kind of a bit tricky but the, the the point is you should be doing your prophecies. They they can give you some really cool items. Like one that one that keep uh, comes to mind for me is the Asenath Chant uh, prophecy for the helm. Oh, yeah. It's basically um, poet's pen but on your head for bows. So there's some really cool build defining uniques you can find from prophecies, which can be a lot of fun to to build around. And Kintsugi, often yeah, they'll Kintsugi's... put often they'll put these in new league mechanics. Like heist just poops out prophecies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's important to like pick them up, know what they are, um, and be using your silver coins basically. Yeah, and and another yeah. alternative gearing thing that's important to remind people: um, we did brush a little bit on like farming six things in vile side areas. They have a very high chance to drop them, but they're corrupted. Important to remember that you can recolor your six things or just play like, corrupted gear with your crafting bench. It'll just cost vile orbs in addition to chromes. And that works for every item. Yeah. 
I mean, it's worth pointing out that these, these these tips can obviously be good for trade league too, right? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're crucial for solo cell phone, but they're very good for, for trade league as well. Getting a day one six link on any league is obviously really, really good. And then fossil farming. Um, mm. Obviously, uh, you don't want to spend a thousand chaos orbs for a good energy shield chest. So it's a good idea. To, it can be a good idea to focus farming certain fossils. So the, the fossil farming locations will all be on like the wiki. So, um, it, you know, if you're if you're trying to craft like a weapon, you might want jagged fossils. So you might want to look up a jagged fossil strut, for example. So yeah, dove can be a really good way. Dove is kind of like, like fossil crafting is kind of like the best thing we really have outside of harvest. But we'll see, we'll have to see what harvest brings to the table, which is why it's a big question mark. And yeah, uh, talking about end game gear for solar cell found. As I mentioned previously, pretty much anything is achievable. But what's realistic is different than that, obviously. Um, you know, we can't all be super, super lucky, right? So most endgame gear in Solar Cell Found is going to be unique or multi-modded. Like my, 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 like, builds like Harold's, uh, Aura Stacker, for example, are good in Solar Cell Found because they only need uniques. So you mm -hmm. don't really need to craft actual gear. So a lot, a lot of, a lot of really powerful builds that use only uniques can be really, really, um, good in SSF. Because you don't need to spend, you know, you don't need to RNG craft it. You, it just drops and you've got it. Um, or alternatively, multi-modded gear. So it's important to keep that in mind when you are dropping exalts. As I, the first thing I mentioned on this slide was you can just exalt stuff. It's kind of fake news actually, because as I said, the end game gear ends up being multi-modded gear for a, for a lot of slots currently. So you do end up needing to save those exalts for multi-modding. So important to keep that in mind. Depend, you know, if you if you get to that point. Um, I don't know, like, how many people realistically are multi-modding gear in Solar Cell Fan, but if you do get to that point, you'll feel uh, a real sting of regret if you've been exalting yeah. some three-property jewels, and then you need to multi-mod an axe, and you have, like, zero exalts. Yeah, a, a really good method there for if you do want to exalt jewels is, again, the complicated betrayal mechanic, but you can get uh, free exalted orbs there from Leo. Not, like, actual exalted orbs, but it'll add a property to gear, so a lot of people will farm that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess that goes back to div card farming as yeah. well. If you do need exalts, I remember um, one thing I used to do was farm uh, exalted divination cards. It can be a viable thing yeah. if you're desperate enough. And, and yeah, it also uh, just... it depends a lot on the league. Some leagues will just drop a lot more. Generally, they're like just like some slight variance every league. But I think was it a legion that just like was raining exalts. I think it was like Legion where both me and Noogie had like 17 or 18 exalts on day two or three. It was like insane. I've never had anything like it. Honestly, most sleep mechanics these days are balanced around ridiculous amounts of loot. So. Yeah. Yeah, Delirium and Heist did the same. So. Uh, but yeah, just to mention that last point in the slide there. So I've been brief briefly alluding to it. But it is something to keep in mind if you are thinking about playing Solo Cell Fan next league. Maybe you haven't played Harvest. Maybe you did, but you stopped playing. Maybe you just haven't played Solo Cell Fan with it. Um, Harvest is like a big, a big question mark for me because this allowed crafting of gear to be so much more accessible. Like it's, um, it was kind of game breaking. It's kind of controversial even because it was so accessible compared to what we have at the moment. Um, so depending on how it goes core next league, so obviously at the time of this video, we don't know, um, might be game changing for solo cell found. We don't know yet, but you should probably, I don't, I don't know if you have any, if there's any like half harvest crafting videos, but you might want to refresh or just wait until the announcement where I'm sure lots of people will be talking about it. Mm -hmm. Um, cause yeah, that, is, that, that could be huge. That could be game changing for solo cell found. That could be, um, yeah, but we don't know. So question mark for, for the time being yeah it's going to be really interesting to see what they remove from it because they got to remove something yeah i mean it could be bare bones it could be close to its initial Im implementation it could be anywhere in between we don't know what's your guess no I, i'm not guessing this is this, this is what i'm doing i'm being extremely realistic so i loved it i know a lot of people didn't like it but i loved it yeah me too my my point of view is like my what I'm trying to do is temper my expectations. So the only thing I want currently or need currently 
is things like changing resistances. So in Peewee currently, if you've got a piece of gear with fire and lightning res, that's it. You can't like you can't like change that to cold res, right? If it's got fire and lightning res and the suffixes are full, you kind of stuck with it unless you like gamble trying to recraft it. In harvest, you could change that fire res to uh, cold res of the same tier, and that being able to swap resistances around didn't necessarily make the item better, right? Like it's it's the same tier of res. But it allowed you to fit in gear a lot easier, like make gear swap switches a lot easier. So just stuff like that. Just yeah. stuff like that, you know. Doesn't even need to be like the actual crafting, but even stuff like that is huge. So Do you that's think kind they're going to my... keep the divination flip? If they don't, it's a mistake. I mean, let's be real. Gambling is fun. Yeah, <laughs> so... I think they should lower the odds on it, though. Oh, you mean make it so it's always a loss? Yeah. Even if it's like 10% I mean, I less chance. Well, the beauty of that, so if you don't know what we're talking about, in Harvest you could take a divination card and it would either, um, you, you, you would have like a chance of losing it or doubling it or up to doubling it, I should say. Yep. It's beautiful. So you could take, you could take one doctor card, the headhunter card, gamble it once, twice, three times, and it, it, you could actually get all eight cards off the one. Or you could gamble it and lose it on the first try, right? It's um, now, in Trade League, this is pretty perfectly balanced, I want to say. It's literally gambling, right? In Solar Southhander, it's actually overpowered. Because the chances of you finding one Doctor card in Solar Southhander is actually fair enough, right? You might actually you might actually get a, a, a Doctor card. It's not actually that unrealistic. It's not that crazy. You can get it from a stack deck or something, right? It's not that crazy. But the LTV getting A, it's like zero, right? So if you do this uh, gambling method by Harvest, you can actually take that one card, which is worthless in Solar Cell Found, and turn it into a full belt. So in, in, in Solar Cell Found, this is just huge. This is just a massive buff. Yep. So I'd, I'd love it if that went core, but I, you know, who knows? Yeah. Re realistically, I think they'll remove all of the targeted annuls, the remove only, like every, every form of removing something from Harvest. And I, I'm thinking they'll keep all the ads. Yeah, um, but then, yeah, you also think about, like, how rare is it going to be too, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and I, I mean, I think the only way to, like, keep the remove stuff, like, targeted removes, would be a, uh, a, um, system similar to Last Epoch, which is another action role playing game with a really cool crafting system. Uh, so it would have to be similar to that, where there was a chance that it would corrupt your item. Yeah, I mean, I'm... I'm... I basically call the the crafting system in Last Epoch like Harvest League because yeah yeah um it it would be cool um I'm not actually expecting them to actually put like that level of like any of that crafting into the game I'm I'm not gonna put my hopes that high but that would be awesome but I, I'm not gonna put my I'm not gonna put my hopes that high yeah I'm, I'm expecting like a bestiary implementation. Yeah, you know, something pretty basic strips out like a lot of the really OP stuff. They could just, just make it really stuff. rare as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's there are ways to balance it. We'll we'll see what they decide to do. I'm and, excited. Yeah. Uh, we can go to the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> Monka steer, dude. Yeah, there's a bit of debate putting people around a Monka Steer, but I think the Monka Steer meta is uh, in play. So, leveling. So, um, for a lot of people, I think Monka Steer is, you know, the, 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 the emote on the screen is pretty accurate, I think, for, for a lot of people. Yep. Um, so, basically, it's important to have a good leveling build, especially in Solar Cell Phone. You can kind of, like, buy leveling gear in Trade League and get to the point where even a bad leveling build will just trivialize leveling. But in SSF, it's really important to have a strong leveling build that can carry. Um, this doesn't mean you're playing Orb of Storms, Storm Blast Mine to level 90 or something. This just means you're playing Orb of Storms, Storm Blast Mine to the minimum level requirement before you can switch. So this might be level 30, 40, 50, 60, but it's important to keep in mind that um, you, you are using one of these leveling builds. I highly recommend it. Um, like on a minor, if, even if you're playing like Icicle Mines or... Uh, Frostbolt mines or, or, or whatever. I still like leveling with arc mines. It's 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 usually pretty easy to switch between the two. Um, 
minions, obviously. Well, all the, all minions are kind of good to level with, but I just put SRS because it's a really strong early one. Yeah. Um, but mi minions are actually just really good. In and SSF, just... a, a note for the people that might find mines very clunky. Remember that you can put detonate mines on mouse button one, and you can still continue to use it as your movement key. And it'll just be like auto blasting mines as you, as you put them down. So they're just very strong and feels more like a spell than anything else. Yeah. Uh, melee, this is one that's close to me. Um, I like to play a lot of Lacerate Gladiator. So even though I play a lot of Lacerate Glad, I'll get this question out like, why aren't you using Lacerate? Like, I thought you were playing Lacerate. It's because uh, there's there's lots of ways to level Lacerate, and Lacerate's not one of them. Lacerate's kind of slow and clunky early on with very tiny AoE. So I usually will use something like Blade Storm or Earthquake or Earth Shatter or I mean there's, there's there's more here even, but I mean the TLDRs don't play Lacerate right. Um, but this goes with a lot of other melee builds. Um, so yeah, going with a tried, true, tested uh, uh, Earthquake, Earth Shatter, uh, Blade Storm build is going to be a lot smoother. Very again, very usually the, the the point of these leveling builds is to be easy to transition to. You know, so you, you're taking a lot of generic nodes and not specking into like build specific nodes till later. Uh, bows, obviously, we mentioned like what we think are the only two really viable bow builds, but yeah, Corsic Rain, Toxic Rain. Um, it might be a bit harder to respect these, but they're so much stronger than the alternatives that you really should just play these for a while. So in, in, the, in the case of bows, you might be playing Corsic Arrow, Toxic Rain till level 90 before you swap to like another bow build, but yeah. And then, yeah, obviously, Orb of Storm, Storm Blast Mine, which is the current racing meta. Unless that's, I mean, that might have changed, you know? But uh, that's currently, like, the caster leveling meta, I think. Do you know any other, like, leveling builds? It's, like, pretty much all the ones I use here. Especially without yeah. having gear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you can do whatever you want when you've got gear. This is this is more for starting out. So Actually, those, anyway, like, we... the, the steel seal, the one that looks like a shotgun, that was actually really nice to level with. Right, yeah, yeah. The steel skills are actually surprisingly good for leveling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And ED. Yeah. I didn't put AD on here, but yeah. He, he, obviously, the Chaos Dot builds are excellent. Yeah. And, oh, and the Spellslinger builds. Yeah, Spellslinger, yeah. Cold Dot was surprisingly good as well. Yeah. So there's obviously a lot on here, but the point is you should have a leveling build. I highly recommend it. I wouldn't play like a Lacerate Glad as a Lacerate. You know, you're, you're just going to have a scuff day one. So mm -hmm. yep. uh, we can skip the slide because it's, it's just nauseating. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> this is better. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked this picture because this is what I feel about the Atlas. It's a bit, it's a struggle. The Atlas is a struggle. That's okay. okay. I can it's... cover that. Yeah. So I've always struggled with the Atlas. It partially because it changes a lot. Um, it's very grindy. It's, it's, it's difficult. Um, it's easy, you can mess up, feel like you made mistakes. It's uh, yeah, I think I think this emote covers it pretty well. Um, th this slide's gonna honestly, I'm probably gonna learn something just talking about this slide because it's it's a it's a difficult subject to cover. Um, so I guess we'll just talk about Atlas progression. So, um, I just kind of wing it. Uh, is Carve doing a presentation on Atlas? Can we, can we skip No, <laughs> um, I don't want to have Carve make like a long presentation when I think, uh, I think it's going to change massively. So I'm going to do a shorter one with a lot of tips as well, where I'll be like going into it a lot and I can add a lot here when, between your topics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, Atlas progression is difficult. It's a very big topic to discuss. Um, I just follow the, so I just follow like, the basic progression. I don't do anything spicy here. You don't really have to. Um, my my real tip for, here for Atlas progression in Solo Cell Found is just it, it is difficult. It is time consuming. It is a grind. Um, so just keep that in mind. You know, you're, you're probably not doing anything wrong. I get a lot of questions like help, help, help. Um, you know, I feel stuck. That's that's perfectly normal. I think um, it just takes a long time to progress. Um, but I will give some tips below on how to progress the atlas like what things things you can do to to make sure you are progressing at a good pace um so map sustain's a big one map sustain is like the number one thing um what i like to do with map sustain is i like to use all my master missions um if you're not using all your master missions that's like a huge chunk of um especially if you're not using them properly that's a huge chunk of um map sustain you're missing out on 
So, for example, Alva, you can use her by putting her on your highest tier maps that sh you know she has the missions available for. So, for example, if it's a uh, white tier Alva, you put that on a tier five map. It'll give you a tier five. It can give you a tier five temple. Then there's a formula for that, but that's kind of like the tier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you use a yellow tier Alva on a tier ten, she she can give you up to a tier ten and so on and so forth. So it's good to save Alva for your higher tier maps. Don't, don't like neglect it though. Like be, you can, you can use her kind of liberally, but make sure you are using, especially your yellow and your red tier Alva's early on, on your highest tier maps. So that way you are getting that higher tier temple so you can get those uh, higher tier maps back. Um, same with Zana. Um, Betrayal, you don't, you, you don't really use for, for maps the same so much. I don't, I don't think anyway, so that's not as important. But yeah. as we mentioned earlier, you might need to do higher tier missions to get those um, crafting bases. Uh, so there's unveiled modifiers, I mean. Um, and Delve. De Delve kind of doesn't really give maps back as much, but it still helps. I wouldn't neglect it because you are going to regret not progressing in the Delve if you if uh, later on. And right? it does if give you, you a know. lot of currency for rolling your maps and stuff. That's true, yeah. So speaking of um, mapping currency, um, obviously you are going to get more returns, both currency and map-wise, from rare maps. So this this kind of feeds back into why build choice is important here. Um, a strong, powerful build that has good defense and good offense is going to handle rare maps a lot better than um, a, a really, really squishy, underpowered build that can barely handle magic maps. So I obviously am always going to advocate for rare maps, but you do need a build that can handle it. So keep that in mind. Um, so Alk Sustain is important here, obviously. This does mean you end up having to pick up those uniques. You know, usually you don't pick up uniques at a certain point. But in SSF, they're very important to pick up for uh, Alchemy Sustain. Although it, d it depends a lot on the league mechanic too. Um, not, not every league is this massive struggle for Alchemies, but some, sometimes that can be the case. Um, chiseling. Um, this, isn't, this doesn't come up as much anymore, I think just because the leagues drop so many chisels, right? Mm -hmm. But um, you should be chiseling your maps, your highest maps always, obviously. Um, it's kind of tricky because Highscape so many, and I think uh, 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 what do you call it? Delirium and other and, and Legion and whatnot did as well. So yeah. it's kind of tricky. Um, I think these days you, you do have a lot of chisels just because the uh, the Atlas bonus, the Awakening level bonus does give you a lot of chisels as well. Mm -hmm. So you should be using them pretty liberally these days. Um, ideally, I mean. Th th Ideally, you're running out of chisels, right? If you have like 5,000 chisels in your stash, well, I guess more realistically, like a couple hundred, you're probably hoarding too much. You're probably not using them. So make sure you are using your chisels. I, I, I think you tend to hoard them more than run out these days. So yeah, mm -hmm. just make sure you are chiseling your highest tier maps always. Yeah, you should be able to at least chisel all your reds. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, Valorbing. Now, this is difficult. So in SC... Uh, in softcore, this is going to be a bit easier. You probably should just be Valor being your maps if your build can handle it. Especially um, your red maps. For uh, unlocking the bonus for those maps. But in hardcore, I really struggle with this personally. Because um, it can make the maps really rippy. Borderline unrunnable. Yeah. Um, really, 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 really tricky to balance here. But it is, if your build can handle it and you're feeling confident enough, then go for it. Valor being is a great thing to do. It can add a lot. Of, it can get a quantity bonus. So if, you <clears throat> if you're unaware, when the map goes unidentified after Valorbing, it didn't reroll the map. It's still the same map. The only what it, the goal of that isn't to like kill you to reflect or something. It's to give you the unidentified map bonus, which is 30 quantity, I believe. Yep. Well, yeah. is the 30 quantity just the one from the sextant? No, no, no. That, I think that's just implicit, actually. doesn't apply to unique maps, but it does apply to, to just regular unidentified yeah. maps. I think so it's 20. I it's think it's 20. 20 and then 30 from the sextant. Yeah, well, well, I thought it was 30, but the point is, is it gives you quantity, whatever, 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 yeah. if it's 20 or 30. Um, so it's uh, it, it's it's really good that the quantity bonus is just free quantity, basically. <clears throat> and then if it goes 8 mod rare, you've got additional mods. It's like exalting the map twice or more if it didn't start at 6. Um... So yeah, generally speaking, it's a it's a good thing to use them. It's just tricky because sometimes it can be it can re-roll into a really rippy rare map. So just uh, just gotta be careful with that. 
Uh, speaking of sextants, you mentioned. Um, important you're using these as well. Uh, these are a bit easier to run out on. Um, th 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 this can like really really help you if you're if you're feeling stuck. This is this is um, a really good way to get a lot of additional uh, mobs on the map. So things like area contains additional monsters are excellent here. So you make sure you are using your sextants, obviously, especially early on. It really 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 helps you get unstuck if you're feeling stuck in the atlas progression. And yeah. then, obviously, Horizon Orbs. Um, <clears throat> I th I've seen this a lot on uh, Reddit, actually. So, there's a bit of confusion about how these work. Try to explain it as best as I can. So, Horizon Orbs will re-roll a map into a natural map of that tier. So, a natural map is one that drops without any watch stones. Uh, sorry, it drops... Um, Oh God, what's the, what's, the, the what's easiest the way to see it is sadly through the map tab. I can like pop in. I have POV yes. open in the background here. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. We can do that. I can. So for example, we can see here. Yeah. So since so, since um, Castle Ruin appears here in the map tab as a tier 13, that means that the first time you encounter Castle Ruins is as a tier 13. Uh, and you'll see that when I like, when I uh, pull out, let's see, some of these should disappear here. I remember what are yeah, like... so a fresh map tab will show this off really well. This is a little pay to win there. Do I have to like remake the zone, I think, for it to actually disappear? Maybe. But yeah, it'll it'll show it really, really well on a fresh uh, on a fresh league either way. Yeah. So yeah. But um and usually GGG give out a list of yeah. all the natural. So maps now that I remade too. the zone, you see that some of them disappeared, but Necropolis stayed. Oh yeah, and, and yeah. Castle Ruins didn't. But uh, Necropolis stayed, so you can see that Necropolis is a natural tier 16s. Um, and the others weren't. So I could Horizon to uh, Necropolis. Yeah. Yeah. So what this essentially means, the way GGG have spread out maps in the current Atlas, and I don't know if this will change in the future, so keep that in mind, when, you know, if you're watching this video in the future. Um, it's really, 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 really heavily stacked at the bottom. The majority of maps are below tier 5. Like, there's like... I don't know how many exactly, but it's probably like 80. Like, over half the Atlas is, like, the, the first few tiers. Yeah. So what this means is Horizon all being lower tier maps is... is do, Don't do it. You know, check Xana for maps. Um, maybe mess around with your watch tones. Or... Uh, some some leak mechanics will drop natural maps that aren't on your atlas, I believe. Things like um, I believe Alva and Delve can do this. Um, yeah. But don't typically don't Horizon of them. And it's Ziri, yeah. That's right. She she has that mechanic. Um, but typically don't Horizon Orb lower tier maps. That's going to be or, or or vendor recipe them. Yeah. I don't know if you want to show that. I'll off, I'll be covering vendor too. recipe especially like in depth in the mapping session, which is tomorrow. But yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, because that's like a whole thing as well. Pee-wee's complicated. I know. I'll give some uh, yeah. some extra tips as well for some... Uh, the, I do this like very, very early. Um, I'll tap into in-game again. A lot of people don't know how to reset the maps that Zana sells you or when you encounter Zana. Um, so while you are progressing early, you'll find a bunch of tier 1 maps. Um, and I also try to get the... I think it's called the Lost Maps Prophecy to get a bunch of tier 1 maps. Um... And then what you can very, very early do then, when you get something like... It's very common that I get like 11 or 12 park maps or 11 or 12 volcano maps. Plus I'm able to buy a bunch of tier 1 maps from Kirak. Uh, and I'll be covering exactly how the 3 to 1 mechanic works very in depth in the mapping session tomorrow. Uh, but I can basically vendor up instantly from like 11 or 12 tier 1s. Um, I can get one tier 3 map. Uh, and that is when you first encounter Zana. You basically, you kill the boss in a tier 3 map, then you get Zana. And the reason why I try to rush this, I actually try to do this as my first or second map, um, is because then I start getting the Zana, the Zana daily missions. And that is actually how you reset Zana. So if I pull out any map right now, let's just pull out some parks. And uh, you can see that uh, Zana here is selling loads of maps. And this is uh, the maps that she's selling is based on your, I think it's either on your completed maps or on your completed bonus objective. But oh, either way, good. early on, she'll just be selling a bunch of maps. And this resets yeah. every time I use her. So if I uh, hold this open now, 
you can see that she's selling like a bunch of maps here. But if I now that she has opened a map, this has changed. And I can just keep like cycling this out. Um and it'll change them. And then you can hold Alt and it'll say like this one is incomplete. And I actually thought it used to be based on the watchstones, but I farmed up to 32 watchstones, but with very low completions, and it was actually not getting many um shaper maps and stuff like that. Yeah, if you go to your map device real quick and you look at like the Zana mods you can put on the map, I believe that shows the state of Zana, like her level. So you can see you actually haven't completed it. Wow. Complete 14 more bonus objectives. Yeah, so I'm pretty confident it's based off that. I'm pretty confident. And uh, The fact that we don't know is funny though. But and yeah, make sure confident. that you check the vendor, like Zana, before opening up the daily. Stay. There's the legend of a streamer called Steel Mage that opened the vendor after having opened the daily. Um, so the, 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 he lost a Cortex. The second he like went away from the window, he lost a Cortex. It was very sad. <sighs> I thought I repressed that memory, but yeah. Um, Zana can sell Cortex, she can sell Elder Guardian maps, she can sell Shepard Guardian maps. Check your Zanas, is the TLDR. Yeah. Check your Zanas. Yeah. Before you open it. And with, with another really hot tip for Zana that I always do at the start of League is like, um, sometimes I can do Urbalab as early as like 10 or 8 hours into a League. Uh, and that's because I check every time I find a Zana in a map, I'll look through the maps, not just for like what maps I haven't completed, but I'll also be looking for um, contains a lab trial. Yeah. All right. So just to finish covering Horizon Orbs real quick. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I like to use these for the higher tier maps because, as I mentioned, a lot of the maps are stacked in the lower tiers. So just using them on your reds is usually what I uh, that's what I like to do. It's really, really, really effective to get uh, red maps unlocked because there's maybe like. 30 or so 40 red maps or something like that i don't know the exact number which is um so each tier for example like tier 16 is a good one i believe there's like five or something natural tier 16s mm -hmm. so you've got a one in five of hitting the one that you need so it's uh it's it's really good to use uh horizon orbs on your higher tier red maps that's what i like to use them on yeah and it's really good that it works on shaper guardians now yeah yeah that too Next slide. But wait, there's more. Wow, that's a pog picture. So yeah, efficiency. So I put Tai Tai on there because uh, I asked Chat, he's the most efficient player in PUE, and they said Tai Tai. So we put Tai Tai on there. Havoc so rolling in his he's... grave. I know, I know. It was between. It was between them. It was between them, wasn't it? Um, but I think Tai Tai is uh, he's risen. So yeah, efficiency. Um. So it's a bit of a bit of a broad topic here, a bit of a list topic here, but obviously um I put it on here because I think the what what people do in solo cell found to be more efficient without trade can be applied to trade as well. So what I mean by that is um a lot of the times in trade league you'll be it turns out you'll actually be extremely inefficient because you'll be stuck thinking about an item that you want to buy on the market right or you'll be spending a lot of time setting out whoops and um or or, or uh, waiting for somebody to respond and not mapping you'll just be sitting in the hideout you know thinking why is this guy stuck in uber lab you know hurry up um so efficiency is when you say screw that i'm just gonna just map 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 and i think you can apply that to trade even though you're not as, even though you're not solo self found you know so not relying as much on trade at least early on um can be can be really good yeah and and you'll so, very very early notice that you might even be a lot faster in solo cell phone um i generally do like a faster level 95 push in ssf than i actually do in trade you know normally you notice like ssf will a lot of the time be further ahead than like hardcore trade league yeah yeah uh you know it, i think we've both uh actually beaten trade to 100 before yeah. in solo cell phone so have you done it two or three times i've done it twice I think you've done yeah, it three yeah but um the, po the point is don't get too bogged down by trade obviously trades are, trades over trades like extremely powerful tool but don't rely on it so much at least early on that you forget to just play the game right because yeah. you, you'll um you'll, you'll end up wasting a lot of time in your hideout yeah 
So yeah, oh, you know, that's, the, that's the downtime part of the, uh, the, uh, the Your hideout there. is lava. Your hideout is lava, that's exactly what my chat was saying. Your hideout is lava. So don't, don't spend too much time in it. Obviously, I mean, have fun still, obviously, number one, but also hideout is lava. We're supposed to have fun? <laughs> I think so. Um, but yeah, uh, so looting is, is a good example. So just to give some examples of efficiency, um, looting is a good one. Um, so don't over loot. Um, so that, that's why filters are very, very important. Um, I did mention earlier about picking up portal scrolls because you need portal scrolls to portal out of maps and you have to pick them up. Otherwise you can't portal out. But that's te technically not true. You can actually sell things like whetstones or, um, or other items to buy portal scrolls. And that's probably more efficient than just picking up portal scrolls. You know, you can just sell uh, a stack of whetstones and buy a light. I think Lighty made me change my mind on that. Really? Yeah, I have, I have portal scrolls in my filter again. Why is that? Because one whetstone is one portal scroll, basically. It's like 1.2 portal scrolls or something. And armor scraps are two armor scraps per portal. That's why yeah, I, like, I, I noticed Lighty had portal scrolls in his filter, and I was like, he was like, well, why, why don't you? And I was like, fuck. So I've actually put them back on. Well, I, I, I mean, I have them on anyway, but that's because I'm lazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's but, not um, worth picking up yeah. Wisdoms. There you really want a vendor for. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, so basically the, the TLDR is if you're the kind of player that likes picking up everything because it's fun to pick up everything, that's fine. Just be aware that it's super, super, super inefficient. So, you know, the loot you choose to pick up is important, is, is kind of the point of uh, that little, this little topic here. So, you know, the, the, there is going to be a point, for example, where you might not need to pick up, um, well, I guess not portals, apparently, but um, <laughs> other items, right? Well, like armor scraps is one. A, that you might a not good rule of up. thumb that I have for myself with looting and efficiency, if I, if I know that my character has bad boots, say I'm running around with 20% movement speed, 43 life, and one resist, I will make sure that I'm picking up every single rare boot. But if I have boots that have 90 life, 30 movement speed, double resist and a third crafted I'm probably I might even be ditching boots entirely and maybe only picking up the ones from the boss at the end of the map yeah like uh I I, I, I there's a really good example here um for like super super min max efficiency that most people won't really care about because you probably shouldn't play the game this way but you can um when you're at peak efficiency you don't need the stash the stash is a crutch. Everything you need should be in your inventory. You Maybe you vendor, but you don't stash, right? So for example, if you have all your six links, if you have all your gear like linked and socketed and everything, you're not picking up six sockets. If you have all your gear crafted and everything, you don't even need to pick up exalts technically, right? I mean, you probably pick up exalts, let's be real, but you're basically only a racing picking thing. up. It's more of a racing thing, but that's like how far you can take efficiency. If you want to, I, and to be fair though, to be fair, I, I in some trade leagues. So this this goes for trade league too. Obviously, this is not SSF specific, which is why this that's why this trade, this uh, slide is good because it's not just an SSF thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe in trade league jewelers and fusions can become so invaluable that the time it takes to pick them up and vendor them and to sell them is so low. Uh, sorry, it's so big compared to the amount of profit you get. That it's actually not profitable to pick them up because i believe people like cute dog don't even pick them up anymore after a certain point mm -hmm. so it's not necessarily completely cooked what they're you know, not picking up six sockets it's actually technically valid for the top you know zero point whatever percent but still it's worth pointing out right it's still it's, it's worth pointing out um something somebody asked like why i specifically mentioned boss drops um so the reason i mentioned that is there are some people that would like fill up their inventory with rares, portal out, go back in the map, and maybe per map, they're using four or five portals to vendor like five or six inventories worth of rares, even like two handers and, and chests and stuff. Um, normally what I would do, I very, very rarely go back into a map twice. I will mostly um, fill up my inventory when killing the boss, because in an alt map, the boss will normally drop like five to 10 rares. So I'll make sure I loot all of those and vendor those, especially on Soul Cell Phone where you roll uh, and need a lot of alterations. But 
you end up being very poor, especially in Trade League, if you're using four or five portals to pick up like, hey, I've picked up 11 Karuri choppers this map. Because until smart loot, which is something they're experimenting with in Heist right now, which is like just rares rolling a lot better and just being better, there's a very low chance they're going to identify and pick up a good rare. Who does that? Yeah, so that's the thing, right? I, I would wager most people don't really think about efficiency that much when they play the game. But I do think um, if you are looking to step up your game a bit, it is uh, something to think uh, keep in mind. You, you know, you shouldn't be looting everything. I imagine a lot of people do loot, like, multiple times. I imagine the majority of players, more than 50%, would not surprise me at all take more than one portal per map which to you and me is like bizarre right but that's probably very normal like why would you why would you not use the portals to go back I, into the map right? i think the fact that the alteration price is entirely so low i think um more people are being more efficient now than in the past alterations used to be 20 to 1c because nearly everybody used to use mortal multiple portals per map and pick up shit ton of vaults so yeah. I, I think people are becoming more efficient over time. The most important thing is to have fun. That is the bottom line. That's why we're yes, playing this yeah. game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, should you use Chaos Recipe? Uh, not in SSF, I don't think. But in Trade League, you can. Um, it's, 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 it's valid. That, you know, you, maybe you buy like a cheap Exalt or something early on. Um, it's, it's a bit more... Uh, I well, how do you feel about it these days? Is? Depends on the league and what you want. Um, I have done Chaos Recipe actively twice in the last five years. Um, the last time I did it was very recently in a... Uh, it was in the first or second gauntlet. Oh, it must have... No. It must have been the second, right? Because we had um, Harvest. I don't know. Maybe it was in the Harvest one. Uh, but either way, it was in one of the gauntlets or the Chinese gauntlet. Uh, because I wanted a um, Glorious Vanity to uh, get the like crazy, crazy mitigation defense of Zabakwa. Um, so if there's something you really oh. need on Zana, like for example, I needed to spam Legion, so I farmed like two or 300 Chaos uh, to farm Legion, and I did get it. It was a fairly okay strat. Um, most of the time, I don't think it's ever... It's just such a fun thing for me. I absolutely hate doing Chaos Recipe. For I think for a lot of people, the idea of having like a hundred Chaos Sorbs on the first day of a league is very appealing though. And I think that's why people like doing it. Yeah, I hate it so much. I never do it. Unless I have, unless I can justify to myself, like I need 300, 400 Chaos for this like Legion Jewel or something. Yeah. Yeah. I personally have only done it once or twice as well. Um, I, I normally don't think about it because, like you said, it's a fun sink. But yeah. I, I do I do think it's a valid strategy in, in trade leagues because 100 Chaos Orbs can literally gear your entire character in trade league yeah. on the first day. That's a, it's a lot of wealth mm -hmm. to have 100 Chaos Orbs. And you can start buying so, Exalts. Exactly, which turn into, like, multiple hundreds of Chaos. So. Yeah. yeah. And, and generally... Especially on Soul Cell Fun, I will pretty much always be looting rings, belts, amulets, breach rings, especially talismans, everything to vendor for ults. I'm, I'm, I've never have enough ults. Yeah, yeah, those are very efficient to pick up. Um, so someone asked what the cast recipe is. It's a full set of gear, either unidentified or, or identified. Identified as one chaos, unidentified as two. I guess that's another topic, like do you identify the rares or not? I would argue yes, but... Yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? It is. Yeah, because we don't one. even really do it. Yep. It's hard. Um, yeah. So it just consists of picking up a lot of the gear, not vendoring it until you have full sets. So you need to to do it to do it really efficiently. You need to have your tab set up and ideally practice vendoring because you, uh, you know, it's, if, if you're doing it to get an edge, you sh you know, over the economy, you should be efficient with it. So you should like, you should uh, have your tab set up for it. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, which I guess goes to the last point here is priorities, right? Like what, what you know. So priorities is um basically what what are your goals? Like, like the if your goal is just to get your build up and running, the cast recipe might be a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. Um, 
if your goal is just level 100, then referring back to what we were talking about earlier, you should be spending as little time in the hideout as possible. So you shouldn't even be like picking up anything that you don't need that's not, you know, not essential. So your efficiency is kind of going to be based off your priorities. Like if you're just playing to have fun, get your butt up and running, maybe case recipe is a good idea. If you're trying to get 100 as quickly as possible, then delete your stash, you know, put your stash somewhere else. Don't, don't touch it. Just everything you need should be in your inventory, right? So yeah, your priorities so, are going to dictate your efficiency. So generally that would be like, you want to have transmutes, alts, augments, sometimes towers and elves. Um, if you really try hard engineering orbs, I hate that engineering orbs even exist. Yeah. I don't use them in, except for Kados in Alva. That's the only time I use them. Yeah. Anyway, next slide. Yeah. Right. So this is kind of like the end of it, but just, just, we're just gonna have like a little little chat about some other alternative modes. So obviously, Solo Cell Found is like an alternative to the main game. So if you're interested in Solo Cell Found, you might also be interested in things like private leagues or group found. So me, uh, yeah, we played both. Yeah, we did we did the group found method thing. We did um, we we did private leagues all the time. So, um, yeah, I mean, they can be a lot of fun. Um, they're not quite as punishing as just solo cell found where you have no one to trade with, but they also give you that limited trade environment. So they can be, uh, worth considering. And generally you do get less of the people, A, being dicks about trade, B, not replying. There's a lot less of that. C, no price fixers, never had a price fixer in a private league. D, no bots. There's no bots in private leagues. Well, that's the downsides is. I like my currency bots. I hate you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, I don't play trade, so... Uh, but yeah, nah, um... It reminds me of, like, Ziggy D's private league. He did a, uh, trading social experiment league. So it was basically no trade site. You, had, you just had to, like, talk to human beings. So yeah, nah, you, d you definitely get a different trading experience when you're in a private league versus a trade league. And that, that can be very enjoyable. And again, like, while, you know, obviously what this presentation covered will still be valid for the private league stuff or the group fan stuff, it'll, um, st it'll, it'll be a different training experience from just playing regular trade. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a nice alternative, I reckon. I, I usually enjoy playing private leagues. Yeah. No, it's super fun. Yeah. And uh, that at, at the moment, hardcore trade league as well is a bit like a private league. <laughs> There's like 20 of us. <laughs> Now, as is, I've been asked we, that we should stop propagating that because if we say Trade League is hardcore is dead, then it'll come to fruition. That's true. It's not that bad. So, There's thousands. It's not that bad. Yeah. I might even, actually, if Harvest, depending on the way Harvest goes, core, I was considering going Trade next League, but we'll see. Sure. And generally, yeah. I always, I only ever do like private leagues and group found. Um, a month and a half or two months in. Well, this is actually kind of relevant because it's kind of part of the reason why hardcore is uh, not dying, but there's less players. I know a lot of groups actually, and this might be uh, this might be some of you listening. Um, actually, start the leagues in private leagues with a group of friends. So I know my guild members are, are considering that. I know um, a lot of streamers do that. I know, um, yeah. They're killing the Probably game. Exact. <laughs> They're killing the game. No, but I think it's really fun. It's really it's 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 nice to have a different trade experience. Like you said, you don't have all those uh mm. those problems. I I because I uh, well, I guess I'm gonna off on a bit of a ramble, but I do think trade is okay. It a lot of the times it's the people. <laughs> so yeah. when you're in a, when you're in a private league, when you're in group found, you have you have a you can have quite a positive experience with trading. I find. Yeah. No, for sure. So. But yeah, I'll make uh, friends. Yeah, make friends. Anyway, uh, if there's any questions in chat, I guess, just leave in the, 